Last Sunday, we had a visitor, this young girl, Angela Abaka, who was formerly a mass server here, Christ the King, and who needs to go to India urgently to get a kidney transplant. And we told you last week that we'll take our second collection today for that purpose. So you've all been given envelopes. Don't put it in the first collection. Put your envelope in the second collection. We pray we'll be able to help her to go as soon as possible over to India for that kidney transplant. Today is Vocation Sunday. Vocation. There's a beautiful poem called The Beautiful Hands of a Priest. I'll read it for you. It's beautiful. The beautiful hands of a priest. We need them in life's early morning. We need them again at his close. We feel their warm class of friendship. We seek them when life's woes are leaving us. At the altar, each day we behold them. And the hands of a king on his throne are not equal to them in their greatness. Their dignity stands all alone. And when we are tempted and wander to pathways of shame and sin, it is the hands of a priest that will absolve us. Not once, but again and again. And when we take on life's partner, other hands may prepare us a feast, but the hands that will bless and unite us is the beautiful hands of a priest. God bless them and keep them holy, for the host which their fingers caress, when can a poor sinner do better than to ask him to guide and to bless? When the hour of death comes upon us, may our courage and strength be increased by seeing raised over us in anointing the beautiful hands of a priest. Yes, the hands of a priest are anointed at ordination. The hands that are raised in absolution at confession. Your sins are forgiving you. The hands that hold the host at mass. Take and eat this is my body, this is my blood, the hands of a priest to hold this beautiful host. The hands that anoint us when we are sick to pray for our healing. The hands that you join us together in matrimony to make us one. The hands that we ask to bless our rosary, bless our prayer book, to bless our pens when we're going for exams, or to bless us when we feel low, the beautiful hands of a priest. Today we remember priests, brothers and sisters, and the married couples, the vocation that God has given to us. It reminds me of my own vocation, and I thank God for the vocation is given to me for the past 50 years to be a priest, a man of God. To me, it's a great gift and a great honor, a great privilege, a great blessing to be able to stand here before you as a priest, to preach the word of God, to give people hope and encouragement when they've lost it. To stand at the altar and say, take and eat, this is my body. Or to people who come and kneel down before me in confession and I say, I absolve you from all your sins. I forgive you. Or somebody is dying in hospital and you go and anoint them and pray for them. But God indeed will forgive them and take them to his side. What a blessing. What a privilege. And on this Sunday, a Good Shepherd Sunday, to remind us that the priest is there continuing the work of the Good Shepherd. 
that a priest is given that task of continuing Christ's work, of bringing hope, bringing love to our parishioners, to our youth, to our old people, to prisoners, to lepers, to prostitutes, to all types of people. The priest is privileged, privileged to be that man of God. I always remember that magistrate in hospital when the family called me to pray for him. He was sick in hospital. And I went to see him and prayed for him. I wanted to give him communion. He said, no, Father, I have two wives. But Father, when I leave this hospital, I'll go back to my home and home. And there I'll just take one wife and marry her in church and go to communion. So I prayed for him. That evening his daughter came to my house and said, Father, my dear daddy is dying. He will not leave that hospital. Please do something. I went back to see this man. I went back to see him. And I talked with him. And he then convinced him to make confession and to go to communion. And he went to communion and made a good confession. The next morning I came to the hospital and there he was lying in the bed, just going cold. And he said, Father, I love you. I love you. And he started crying. Father, I love you. Father, because of you, I'm going to heaven. Because of you, Father, I'm going to heaven. I said, why? He said, the doctor just saw me and told me that I'm dying. I'll soon die. But Father, I'm ready to go to God. Because of you, my sins have been forgiven. And I'm in the state of grace to go to God. Because of you, Father, I'm going to heaven. And when I get there, I will pray for you and remember you. I'll never forget that man. Never. Never forget him. Father, I love you. And I thank you. This is the privilege the priest has. The great privilege of being another Christ. The great privilege of being a shepherd to lead his people to God. What an honor. What a privilege. What a blessing. Today the Holy Father has given us his message. It's on page 9 of our Catholic standard. I want all of you to read it. His message of hope, his message of vocations, it's a beautiful message on page 9 of the standard. A beautiful message. And he talks about St. Joseph. It says, St. Joseph suggests three key words for each individual's vocation. Three key words. And what are those three key words? The first one is to dream. Second one is service. Third one is fidelity. The dream. God spoke to Joseph in a dream. Take Mary as your wife. Take your child and go to Egypt. Here it is after you. God spoke to Joseph in a dream. And Joseph obeyed. God can speak to us in a dream. But not always. He speaks to us in our thoughts, in our feelings. He speaks to us to our friends. God speaks to us. But do we listen? Or are we too busy? If God is calling you to be a priest, no, I want to be an engineer. Or the mother will say, no, I don't want you to be a priest. I want you to be a doctor. You know, are we not listening to God? God speaks to us. 
God speaks to us. In our thoughts, in our feelings, in our dreams, God does speak to us. If we are quiet and we're open, don't expect some spectacular way of Christ coming to you and talking to you like thunder and lightning. He comes to you in the quiet. Could be concerning marriage. Could be concerning going to be a priest or a brother or a sister. God speaks to us. If we will listen. If we will listen. God wants us to be of service to others. St. Joseph was a man of service. His life was to serve. He served Christ. He brought Christ to Bethlehem. He served Mary. He looked after her. He served Jesus and Mary in the home in Nazareth. He served. His life was one of service, self giving, concern about others. And in our vocation, we have to be of service. Our life is of service to others, to help others, to assist others. Like I'm asking you to help Angela, who served Mass here for over six years and who came and served Mass at weddings and funerals and Sunday Masses. I'm asking you to help her to get to India to save her life. Service to others. Service to the lepers. Service to the sick and to the street children. Service thinking of others. Service to your wife. Service to your husband and to your children. Service to your friends. Thinking of others. That's what the Pope talks about. And finally, the other word he talks about is fidelity. Faithful to God and his way of life. F faithful. Faithful to God. On the last day, God will not ask you, what did you leave back in the bank in Accra? Well, were you faithful to me? Were you faithful to me? Were you faithful to your vows of baptism? Were you faithful to me? Did we abandon ourselves to God? Did we give our life to God and do what God wants us to do? That's what Joseph did. He abandoned his life to God. He gave up that life. I'm sure he often thought of having grandchildren, many children. And then he's asked to marry Mary and have that one child, Jesus, a foster child. He abandoned his life. He was faithful to God. And Joseph is told, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Sometimes we're afraid of taking those decisions in our vocation. Afraid to take those decisions. Should I get married decisions that we're afraid? Should I become a priest? Should I become a sister or a brother? Sometimes we're afraid. But God is saying, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And then the Pope says, all these will bring joy. You bring joy. You dream. Listen to your dream. Be of service. Be faithful. And it will bring you joy. That's what the world wants today is joy. Not anger and hatred and war and fighting. That's why we should listen to God. Listen. Today we're starting 40 hours adoration. This is the second time within the past two months in preparation for our 70th anniversary. Our first 40 hours wasn't too well attended. So we decided to have a second one to encourage all of you to come and listen to God and praise and thank God. To listen, listen, listen. We start this evening at 7 o'clock after evening mass. 
And we go on to Tuesday evening, non-stop. The program for the adoration is in the bulletin for the various societies. But don't restrict yourself to societies. Come in your own. Yes, yeah, spend tonight. Spend Monday night. Just spend time with Jesus, listening, listening, listening. Just listen. We're all used to the language of our phones, a missed call, a missed call, a rejected call, a call on hold or received call, a missed call. Why? Why did we miss that call? Because we're too busy. A missed call. We were doing something else, so we missed your call. Sorry, I missed your call. I was busy, I was busy. But God calls us, are we too busy? Missed call from God. A missed call. The God is calling us. What's he calling us to? Vocation of marriage. Vocation of being a priest or a brother or a sister. God calls us. Are we too busy? Busy, busy, busy. B-U-S-Y, being under Satan's yoke. We're too busy. Next two days, the time to come here to chapel. We'll be here all day and all night, morning till evening. Are we too busy to give time to God and sit and be quiet? Listen to God. Maybe God will ring you and God will talk to you. Maybe God has a message for you. So a missed call. A missed call. Don't miss God's call. A rejected call. Sometimes we reject calls. Somebody rings us, we don't mind them. Somebody rings us and we reject it. Sometimes we reject God's call because why? We've no faith in God. We've nothing to do with God. Don't oh, mind God. Don't mind him. Mind. I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. Don't reject God's call. God is calling you. Don't reject it. On hold. On hold. Just waiting and waiting. I'm on hold. Can't make up their minds. Afraid. Going out into the dark. Afraid of holding God's hand. It's not easy to hold God's hand. It's not easy. I'll always remember the first day of October. 1971. I was standing on the boat coming from Liverpool to Ghana. I was a young boy of 25. And I stood at the front of the boat, the very front. And the boat was coming down the River Mersey. Next stop, Ghana. I'd never been to Africa before. I never talked to a black person before. I had nothing to do with Africa. And here was I taken God's word, literally, come and follow me. I'll never forget that time. I stood at the front of that boat with tears in my eyes and said, Lord, there's no turning back. There's no turning back now. Here I am, Lord. Take care of me. That's 50 years ago, 1st of October, 1971. I'm here today. God has taken care of me and looked after me for those 50 years. So don't be afraid of putting your hand in God's hand. Don't reject God's call. Don't miss God's call. Don't put God on hold. But let's listen and follow the call of God. Give God time Give God a chance. Listen to him. We are blessed that Christ the King with an adoration chapel. We're blessed. Some of you have complained that there's a lot of mosquitoes in the adoration chapel. I want you to know yesterday I fumigated the place. <laughs> so there's no more mosquitoes there. Any mosquito that comes there, sack them, sack them out. We shouldn't be here. <laughs> I fumigated the whole uh, adoration chapel. So when you go there, you'll be, you won't be bitten by mosquitoes. 
I want you to enjoy the Adoration Chapel. I want you to spend time there every week, one hour a week, just listening to God and talking to God and sharing with God. That's what I want from you. So today on this vocation day, let's listen to God. What did the Pope say? Dream. Listen. Dream. Be of service to one another and be faithful. Pray that you listen to God's call. Don't reject it. That you'll answer God's call, whatever God wants. Don't put God on hold, but give yourself completely and not to him. I thank God I'm a priest. I love being a priest, and I thank God for the great gift he's given to me of 50 years as a Catholic priest of the Divine Word Missionaries working here with you in Christ the King. I thank God for that gift. Let's pray for our priests today. All our priests in our archdiocese, we pray especially for Archbishop Kofi, that God indeed may grant him his healing and blessing. We pray for all our priests. We pray for our Father Bacha, who celebrates 80 years old today. He's in his 80 years today. We remember him in a special way, Father Sami Bacha. And all the priests of our archdiocese, and all the priests working here, that God on this vocation day may guide and bless each and every one of us. We need more priests, more brothers, more sisters here in Christ the King. I'm yet waiting for a reverend sister from Christ the King School. We don't have one sister in 65 years from that school. Why? Why did God not call any girl to be a sister from Christ the King School? So we need parents to encourage your children and if your child tells you wants to be a priest or a sister or a brother you say yes whatever God wants the harvest is great but the laborers are few may God grant our church more laborers and bless us in Jesus name I pray amen <laughs>